Hi, welcome to the Commoner's Mirror. My name is Scott. Today, I made the basement from the Crones of Crookback Bog from The Witcher 3. And this is how I did it. Starting out, I needed to decide on scale, so I mapped everything out, got some chipboard and some foam, and cut everything down to size. I typically use a 28mm scale, and I use D&D minis as a reference for this. So once the structure was made, I started on the wood foundation pieces. I did this by taking some foam and cutting it down to size with a hot wire cutter. After this was done, I took a wire brush and I used that to make the wood grain texture. I painted everything using a brown wash, followed by a black wash, and then a dry brush of mostly white with a little bit of brown. It was at this point that I had fucked up. I tried to make this with plaster and that did not work out so i have to speed run making all of these again you can see that i made them a lot smaller so i think messing up actually worked out in my favor after this was done instead of making the same mistake twice i went ahead and glued them all on cutting away the excess i don't really measure things i like to just dry fit and kind of make things work as i go after making sure everything did fit together i then moved on to the next step which was making the mud that was coming between the boards i did this by making a little wormy dilly with clay and then smushing it between the boards kind of smoothing it out so that a little bit overlap i painted these with a thin brown wash and then moved on to making the support beams I used the hot wire foam cutter again to get the general shape, then used the wire brush to get the wood grain texture, dry fit everything together, and then made adjustment cuts. After this was done, I painted it with the exact same technique using wash after wash with dry brushing at the end. After I finish a group of like pieces, I like to set them all out, make sure they all fit together and all look the same. After they pass the corporate quality test, I go ahead and glue everything into place. Like any other mentally stable 30 year old man, I had a stash of dried plants in my closet that I was able to use to make the roots that are coming out of the walls. During the course of filming this video, I actually moved, so there's a little bit that's missing, which is shown here. You can see the floorboards are added in, there's shelves added in, the roots are actually glued on, and there is some rocky texture that I added. Since I am an insufferable edgelord, I decided to use a real quail skull for the skull. I then got some bamboo skewers to make the little structure that the skull was mounted on. I secured those together with some green stuff, and then I sculpted the antlers out of the same green stuff dry fit them into the quail skull's ears and then I got a piece of butcher's twine and separated the individual pieces of twine so that they were a little bit more thin. I added some texture to the antlers using an exacto knife. I painted these and the wood structure with the same technique so they blend in. I then filled up the quail skull's ears with hot glue and shoved the antlers inside. Lord knows how many times we've all said that out loud. After they were secure, I glued everything in place, then I added on the butcher's twine, securing that with just a dab of super glue, and then cutting away the excess. I struggled for a long time with the technique to actually make the candles, eventually buying a sealing wax stick that fits into a hot glue gun, squirting that directly into water, and then cutting away individual pieces to make the candles. After I had a bunch of these, I then got out a hot wire foam cutter individual tool. I used this to melt the bottoms of each individual piece of wax and then secure them in place. I made sure that they would stay as is and after this was done, I went through, added a bunch, and then I used that same tool to melt the tops to give them a more natural look and then also melted some beads so I could get that drippy drip look. After this was done, I realized that I I'd never actually put the center beam on, so I had to go back and do some measurements with a piece and get it fit in there. So you can kind of see how I make adjustments on the fly when I forget to actually do something. After hearing me talk and realizing that I probably have some minor degree of brain damage, you can imagine how often this actually happens. It's kind of a lot. During the course of this mistake, the quail skull ended up getting a little bit of paint on it, so I just used some pure rubbing alcohol with a Q-tip to get it off. In this piece, there are some things that are hanging from the ceiling, and there's also a kind of banner that sits behind the skull. So for the banner, I had a piece of linen that I cut into individual strips, and you'll see that I kind of folded it over because it was too thin, and I wanted it to be able to hold its structure on its own. So after this was done, I put some glue on it and then I tried to put some water and Mod Podge on it, eventually landing on just dunking it completely. For the sacrificial altar stone, I just 
freehanded a piece of XPS foam. I did this and then I cut in some texture. You can see various techniques that I used to get kind of the stone texture there. And then I cleaned everything up with a nice shop vac that you can buy for $19.99 using my link in the description below. Sorry about that. If you do actually have a question about any of the tools that I use, just go ahead and drop a comment and I'll send you to where you need to get it. For the top of the texture, I just used a piece of tin foil and then some rocks. I then painted this with some gray mixed with Mod Podge. While that was drying, I had to glue in some of the benches that are around. It was a little difficult because I already added in some stone texture so they didn't really fit very well, so I had to use copious amounts of hot glue to hold them in place. After the stone was dry, I painted it with a black wash, which is just water, dish soap, and black paint. Then sat that aside and started working on the hair ribbons. I, I don't really know what they are. I had some really thin woven together napkins that I cut strips off of and then secured some armature wire in between and then pinched these together. I cut the excess frills off the end, trimmed it down to size, and then sealed everything together with some super glue. After suffering sleepless nights, knowing that all three people watching this video didn't see me creating the rock texture, I decided to make a beautiful sequence of me actually making some rocks, which is just a few different kinds of rocks mixed with some glue and some black wash, mixing it all together, and then you'll see I scoop it out individually and fit it into the places. So the rocks that I had put in place already, they were supposed to be kind of coming out from the bottom, and once I glued the benches in, it did not look natural at all. So I made this extra, stuck it on there, and then I sprinkled it with a very fine rocky dust at the end to kind of blend it all together. After this had dried, it was time for the stone altar. I put it in place and I realized it was too big yet again. So I trimmed some extra off and kind of reshaped it a little bit and then had to retexture it. Retexturing means that I also had to repaint it. While that was drying, I got to work on the linen strips that had finished drying. I dry fit them with the skull and then I dry fit them to the piece so I could see how much I needed to cut off. Unlike the writers from Netflix, I actually used a reference from the game while making this, so it actually looks somewhat similar. I did make some artistic adjustments like using the quail skull, however, I didn't deviate so far away from the source material that it was completely unrecognizable from the original. You can actually still tell what this is supposed to be unlike the Netflix series. I digress. Moving on to the stone, you can see that I'm painting it again with a dry brush and then a wash and then a dry brush. What I found in making pieces of foam look like rocks is the more layers you do, the more believable of a look you're gonna get. With that finally done, I dry fit all the pieces together to make sure they look good. And then I started making the support poles for the rock. I did this using the same bamboo skewer, chopping it down and then painting it with a brown wash and then hot gluing them into place. They didn't stick very well so I just squashed some additional hot glue in there for additional support and then I dry fit on the hair rope. Still don't know what these are but I dry fit them on either way and used a bunch of hot glue just to secure them in place. Once secure, I moved on to making some additional details. There are some skulls that are on the shelves, so I used Citadel skulls. I just spray painted these while they were on the sprue, cut them off, and then glued them in place using clear Elmer's glue. Same technique as before, added candles to the stone altar. Once secure, I needed to add in some bloody details, so I used blood for the blood god and painted this on in a liberal fashion. To tie everything together that was added at a later time, I use all the same techniques so that everything looks uniform. The last detail that I made is the cobwebs in the corners. In order to do this, I used a used dryer sheet, and yes, it has to be a used dryer sheet, and if you're not using dryer sheets, then you are missing out on some freshy goodness. After I pulled them apart, I glued them into place, and then I painted the entire outside black to finish it all up. And that completed the project, so it's on to the glamour shots. But first, a word from our sponsor. And if you find her, if the girl will die to see you and some light. <laughs> Yeah. 
if you stuck around this long. Thanks to Algorithm Things, and I'll see you in probably the next year it takes me to complete a project.